Hi everybody, Stuart Boron here from the Green Lane Association. Just here to talk to you a little bit about Trailwise 2, our fabulous mapping system, and show you the ropes and how it all works. So here's the home page. First thing you'll notice are a few menus at the top. FAQ, as you would expect, gives you all kinds of information about how things work, uh, how to add comments and so on and so forth, where you can drive, all very good stuff. But the first thing we're going to do is to log in. I use a app called Dashlane which remembers my uh, username and password and most browsers now will give you options to do that as well. So I'm logging in and you can see now that Hello Stuart has appeared uh, and that's basically the control center where I can change my details uh, if I wish to do that, which I don't at the moment. What I want to do is like all of you is look at the map. So let's click on map and see what we see and suddenly we're in glorious mid Wales and we see millions of red and blue lines. So red and blue lines are the lanes, many of which you can drive. Red lines are byways open to all traffic, blues are UCRs or unclassified county roads. So at the moment this is on a base layer of the Ordnance Survey but you can't see it at the moment because we're too far out. So let's find a map and zoom in and see what we can find. Top right there are buttons you can click to zoom in or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can see immediately that a couple of lanes have got exclamation marks by them. This means that there is an issue with that lane or something worth checking out before you go there. Let's click on that one and see what it says. So as with all the lanes on here, TWUID, its ID number comes up. Uh, details are a couple of comments it's a byway open to all traffic and there are restrictions likely of no interest so it's probably just a tarmac road or something like that here's another one let's click on that see what the problem is there it's an unclassified road obstructed to 4x4 so at the moment uh, there's a reason why you can't go down there which you can find out by clicking on the details we're actually going to click on the details of a, another lane further up again there's the Trailwise identification number. There are 31 comments, spyway up to all traffic, and this one's called Strata Florida, which is why I chose it. So click on details. You get a closer view of the rather detailed map. Uh, more information about it, and 31 comments that have been made by people. So this is the great thing about Trailwise. You can update information about your experience on there, photographs to show any issues or problems, updates of what's going on. Uh, if you scroll down a bit further on here, there you go, someone's uploading information saying there was a temporary closure, which means if you're coming from miles away to drive a lane, and Strata Florida is pretty much miles away from everything, you can go on to Trailwise 2, check out your route, check out your lanes, and find out if there's any issues there before you drive. So that's the latest on Strata Florida. And the same applies to thousands of lanes all over the country, which is why Trailwise 2 is so awesome. Up on the right hand side is the zoom in and out buttons and on the left hand side there are toolbars. So let's click on the first one. This is the search. You can search by postcode or location name. Just type in London or whatever town you want to go to. Obviously not London because there are no lanes there. Um, and it will take you straight there in the same way that any normal search system. You can always also search on the TWUID, the Trailwise Unique Identification Number. We use that because uh, councils can use odd systems for classifying their lanes and so over in, in um, wherever we are on the right hand side there near Worcestershire, you might find that that lane there is number 97 in the Worcestershire list and then this lane over here might be 97 in the Powys list and it gets a bit confusing. You can also search under grid reference uh, longitude and latitude. Personally I don't use those because I'm too lazy. Okay next one down is the tools so click on that, that gives you a couple of options. So at the moment when you click on a, a lane you get up the uh, information that we've seen before but if you change to measure line when you click you get a measuring line so you can actually measure the distance along the, in this case Upper Clearwind lane, double click to finish, marvellous, go back to the original one and you can also load your GPX routes so if you've got an existing route, there's my route for Kent because I come from this area, grew up around here um, you can see your route overlaid on the uh, map uh, and then you can zoom in and if there are issues on any of the routes you are proposing to drive you can see them. So there you go, there's my route which is the dotted line, there's an exclamation mark saying there's a problem, click on that, 
obstructed to 4x4s, okay, so you might want to check that one out. This one needs a permit, so there are various reasons why you might want to be careful before you go on those lanes, and Trailwise 2 gives you that information so you know exactly what's going on. Next one down is the layers, just enables you to turn UCRs and boats on and off. And the Highways Authority layer enables you to see which authority is responsible for the lanes in any particular area. Finally, you have the base layers, and that basically um, gives you different options for maps. So as I said, I started with Orland Survey, that can then go to Bing Aerial, which enables you to see the territory that you're driving over. Um, being area with labels that's black down which is a fantastic nature reserve open street map and it shows you the name of every road like an a to z um, i like the old historic maps and this is what the lanes look like in the 18th century that's what they were like up to 1961 and nowadays obviously that's changed because now you have a tunnel so that's really really interesting particularly if you're doing research on the history of lanes. Finally, and rather thrillingly, there's a full screen mode. So if you move your mouse up to the top right hand side, there's a square button which you can click on. And that shows you the whole map without any browser debris around the outside. Uh, so if you're planning a very big journey, you can use the maximum amount of your screen and look at those fantastic lanes waiting to be explored. So I think that's everything. Hope you've enjoyed this little tour. Get on there yourself, use it, find out, plan your routes. It really is a tremendous system. Thank you very much. <laughs>